coconuts grow hair and produce milk, so technically they're mammals. You can't see your shadow in the mirror because a mirror reflects light and a shadow is the absence of light. Female peacocks are called peacunts. So you guys asked for the blue one and the green one. Let's see if they react. So let's talk more about the immunology of tattoos because it's fascinating. So when you get a tattoo, the pigment is injected just below the epidermis into the dermal tissue. And there in that tissue are cells called macrophages. Now macrophages sort of wander around the body cleaning up debris, sort of like a Roomba. But anyway, macrophages want to engulf debris and digest it and get rid of it or recycle it. But in the case of pigment, it can't because the pigment is, well, just kind of impervious to that kind of treatment. So it just stays there. Now the macrophage doesn't know what to do with it because it can't get rid of it and it can't digest it or recycle it. So it just hangs on to it. And the macrophage stays in place and the pigment shows through the macrophage and that's why your pigment shows through your skin. Amazing. Now macrophages don't live forever, they die. And when they die, they release all the pigment. But guess what? There are more macrophages that come in and engulf it and hold it there, which is why this could be lifelong. <gasps> Christ. Not for the Lord. Sorry. <laughs> now explain to me why the comment section for that video is just, he's tall, we're surprised, or he's tall, we're surprised. I've been tall. This next part is just going to be me comparing myself to objects to prove that I'm tall. Kent I Haven, I need your help. Me and door. This is a regular door. Me and a big fish. I'm like a dating profile. Me and a grand piano. Me and a normal sized Christmas tree. Me and an abnormally large Christmas tree. This one doesn't help. So yeah, mathematicians, prove that I'm tall. Let's settle this. Regardez cette poudre à la surface de l'eau. Elle est tellement hydrophobe que si je plonge ma main à l'intérieur, elle formera une barrière autour de mes doigts, les empêchant d'être mouillés. C'est dingue. Et si je les ressors, ils sont complètement secs. C'est incroyable. Okay, essayons avec un téléphone. Même avec un téléphone, ça marche, t'es complètement fou. D'ailleurs, on peut voir l'écran là. On peut voir l'écran au travers. Oh là là, c'est incroyable. <rire> c'est ouf. Trop bien. Cette poudre, c'est une poudre de lycopode. Et les lycopodes, à la base, sont des plantes. C'est utile dans plein de domaines. Mais clairement, son potentiel hydrophobe, c'est ce que je préfère. Alors, la science, cool ou pas I'm gonna teach you four ways to tell if someone's lying to you. Number one, you notice a change in their voice. Studies show that when someone's lying, their voice gets high-pitched because their vocal cords tighten up. Number two, they're blinking more than usual. This indicates that the person is nervous or stressed, which usually means they're telling a lie. Number three, they're hunched over or looking down. This means that they're ashamed of what they're telling you and they feel bad for lying to you. Number four, unusual body movements. If someone is biting their nails or shaking their hands, this means that they're unconsciously trying to calm down their anxiety. Don't do this, this is boring. You can see how the water goes up because of the partial vacuum that is created. Just add some rubbing alcohol. Get the glass coated with the alcohol and light it on fire. What happens if you eat a silica gel packet that says do not eat. Will you die? These silica packets are put into shoe boxes, bags, and pill containers to absorb moisture. And they're filled with silicone beads. These silicone beads are technically harmless if you swallow them. But if a dog or a child swallows the packet, they can choke on it. So technically, eating one of these packets can lead to death. Why the M&M's rouge has disappeared? Présent dès le début en 1941, les M&M's rouges ont été totalement absents des paquets entre 1976 et 1987. La raison, le colorant le plus utilisé du XXe siècle, le rouge numéro 2, 
accusé de développer des tumeurs chez des rats. Et le pire, c'est que les M&M's rouges n'ont jamais contenu ce colorant. Mais bon, pour rassurer les consommateurs, le rouge a été remplacé par le orange. Mais en 1985, un homme, Paul Edmond, créa la Société pour la Restauration et la Préservation des M&M's Rouges. Cette blague prendra une ampleur mondiale, Mars, propriétaire de M&M's, recevra des milliers de lettres du monde entier, et le M&M's Rouge reviendra finalement en 1987. Oh bah du coup y a plus de problème avec le M&M's Rouge eh bien, est-ce que tu sais quel est son colorant aujourd'hui C'est le E120, ou colorant rouge cochenille. Il est issu d'un insecte, la cochenille donc, qui a été séché puis broyé. Et pourtant, le rouge reste un des emblèmes de la marque. <laughs> Did it come towards you?